All right, guys, so I went through my comment session this morning and I realized a lot of you guys are still having issues with the Mixer Brush 2 settings that I use when I'm retouching. So I decided to do this video and then take you through all the steps and then the settings that I normally use when I'm doing my retouch with the Mixer Brush 2. So without further ado, let's jump straight in and then start editing. So I have this beautiful image right here and then I've already created my uh, frequency separation adjustment layers over here. If you want this action, you can just go into my online store and then just download it and then just play it out like that if you don't know how to do it as well you can also check other videos on this channel where i show you how to do it right so let's dive right into the mixer brush too so you just select the mixer brush tool over here at your tools column like this and then you're going to come here to the top all right so always make sure at this side you're going to set your brush to soft round brush like this right so you just click on it and then it's going to appear like this. So you just select the soft round brush like that. All right. So now let's go to the next step. So you can leave this one. This is just the brush for this. And then you come to this side. This is one of the main and the major parts that actually affects a lot of you guys. So you're just going to select this one like this and then select clean brush. Always make sure this is selected. Clean brush is selected. As you can see, it is empty over here like that. Right. So I come to the next one. This one. Always make sure this is unselected. If this is selected, it's going to give you um, this effect. As you can see, as I selected it, it is showing a color over here, which shouldn't be the case. So make sure this is unselected like this. I um, Somebody was saying whenever she paints, she receives or she gets the white color. This is the reason why this is on. It gets her. Uh, so always make sure this is off like this. And then make sure this is selected. This thing over here is selected. When it's not selected like this, it will give you a different effect. So make sure this is selected like this, right? And then you come here and then set this to custom. Always make sure this is set to custom. All right, so with this done, we'll come to the other part as well. So we have the wet, we have the load, and we have the mix and the flow. This is the part that also affects your mixer brush to settings when you're using as well. So with my wetness, I normally set it to 19 or greater, right? And then the load too. So what the wetness does or what the wet does is whenever you are brushing, assuming you are, you are, you are doing a real painting and then you are brushing, the more wet the paint is or the, the more wet the brush is, the more the stroke af affects or appears on your canvas, right? So this is the idea over here. So the more the wetness, the more um, the mixing is going to happen. I don't know if I'm making sense, but I hope I'm making sense here. And then we have the load as well. So the load is, um, let me make an example with a painting as well. When you dip your brush into your, your paint, right? The brush is going to absorb the paint. So the, the, the deeper you dip it, or the more you dip it, the more it's going to load. So that is how it affects your image over here as well. Yeah, I'm trying my best to break this down for you to understand, right? So please try and get what I mean. Yeah, so that is what the load does as well. And this is the mix. So the mix is how much you are brushing. The more you are brushing, the more it's going to mix up for you. So make sure you set the mix to as a um a value that is not going to mix to my like something normal that is going to benefit you, right? So I normally set my mix to test one. And then the flow, I'm sure you know the flow already. If you don't know too, is how much it's applying whenever you make a stroke, how much or how many, um, um, how much is actually applying whenever you make a stroke. So that's what the flow also does. So this is it. This is airbrush. Make sure this is not selected. This is not selected. You can set this to 10% is okay. And then make sure this is deselected. Sample all is deselected. Uh, mind you, I'm using a 2018 um photoshop yeah uh my machine is more compatible with the 2018 uh photoshop that's why i'm using it and then it's 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 to me it's it's, it's best right so this is settings that i normally use so with the weights and the load and then uh, the mix you can play around with it and then see the one that's best suits you and then mind you also if you're using a uh, if you're using a wacom it's gonna affect your image differently, and then if you're using the um, if you're using a mouse too, it's gonna to affect your image differently. Mostly, the Wacom or the tablet um, effect is more than when you're using the mouse. Yeah, 
with the same settings, the effects are quite different. So I'm currently using uh, my tablet. So the effect is kind of different. Yeah, so you might get a different effect when you're using this same settings for or with your mounts or with your um, Wacom or your tablets, right? So let me just go ahead and then start mixing over here. So I have my color layer selected like this with the mixer brush tool with the settings, the settings that we just set right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and then just start. You can increase or decrease the brush size with a close and open brackets. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and then just brush like this gently. Always make sure to take your time and then brush within the tones of the image don't brush if it's a mix mid-tone you don't have to brush in the highlights so you don't have to mix the colors up you just have to take your time and then just brush it gently like that there's quite a concern to me so um i thought the best thing to do right now is to just make a video for you guys to get a full understanding of how it's it's it works yeah so just use the settings and then just try it and then see how it works As I said earlier, the first ones or this effects, this ones, this settings over here are constant. Always make sure they are set to this. But these ones can change. They can change at any time. You can just change them depending on the effects you are getting. But then it's not going to give you block um, colors like white or black or anything. It's just going to mix uh, it up. But then it's, it's just going to affect the intensity and then um how it's it's appearing on the image yeah so i'm gonna brush on the cheeks increase the brush size decrease it because you're gonna continue brushing like that i'm gonna take my time by this line over here just take my time and then brush it gently like that. So you can see the effect happening smoothly and gently. Yeah. You don't have to rush. Just, just take your time and then do it. There's a little highlight over here. I'm going to just paint over. Like that. One thing I'm... I want to advise you guys as well to do also to is to um, be consistent. Don't just do maybe you um, be <laughs> be practicing more. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Be practicing because retouching takes time to actually master. And then when you have the basics, you have the fundamentals. It's kind of easy for you to just keep practicing and then. With time, you're just going to master and then always have a reference photo. Especially when you're a beginner and now starting, you don't really know your style or anything. You have to get a reference picture of maybe one of your masters and then just copy how they retouch their images and then just follow. Yeah, you use the same thing, like the method that maybe I'm teaching right now. You can just use that and then just try and then get the effects that your master's image have. Yeah, that's how you become good at retouching. It becomes more and more easier the more you do it. It becomes easy the more you do it because you keep practicing. I practice quite um, a while to be able to get to to be able to get to where I am now. Even now, I'm still I'm still learning. Yeah, I'm still learning, but then. My clients don't complain when I deliver my works to them. So that is the advantage or that is what I feel is okay. So that's a little advice I'm going to give you guys. Just keep practicing, keep trying. You can download some images online and then just try your hands on this. Or 
or you can get your friends' pictures. You can take some pictures of your friends. Just invite them over, take them some pictures, or take them somewhere on a location. Just take some pictures of them and just keep trying. Keep trying your hands. And gradually, you're going you're gonna to be good at it. Yeah, photography is art. Editing is art as well. And then no matter how talented you are, if you don't know the skills or if you don't master or you don't develop your skills, you're never going to be good at it. So I'm just going to advise that you just keep practicing. Yeah. As the saying goes, practice makes man perfect. So you keep practicing and you're going to be good at it. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and then just like this video as well. If it's helping you, if you're finding some value in it. Now let me zoom out. Let's check the before and after. So this is the before. And this is the after. I actually clean, I clear the, the pimples on her face, the black spots and stuff on her face on this layer. And then we have our frequency separation layer here as well. So as you can see, this is the before and then there's the after. Yeah, the smoothness is going on. So that's basically what you're going to do to get this effect done. So when you finish, you can just come to the texture layer and then select the yeah the spot healing brush tool and then just try and clean some of the textures on the face to get a much smoother image. You're just gonna go and then just dab. One mistake I also realize a lot of people doing as well is over here at this at this stage, they just overdo it. You don't have to overdo it. Make sure you're leaving some of the textures of the image in it. That's what is gonna give it the natural look. But when you clean everything, it's not gonna look natural at all. It's gonna give you that kind of plastic look, which isn't so appealing and nice. Yeah, so you're gonna just reduce the brush size. And then you're just gonna, you're just gonna dab and then just try cleaning as much as you can, but not too much, not overly done. Yeah, so we have some stuff over here on our nose, just cleaning, cleaning, dabbing. This side as well. On her forehead. Keep dabbing. Yeah, on top of her eyebrow a swirl. It's below her eye. Yeah, so as you can see, I'm not doing it so much. And then the brush size is as little as possible just to get a natural look and then not just make it look artificial and fake like robots. <laughs> now let me zoom out. So let's check the before and after. So this is the before and then this is the after. As you can see, our image is looking good. Yes, so I hope this tutorial was helpful to you and you found some value in it. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have any issues as well, you can just comment in the comment section and I'm, I'm glad to help you guys out. See you guys later. Bye.